the United States and Europe. The band Genesis tonight converted Texas Stadium into a high-tech soundstage. Actual intro music until we're on the ground floor. Anywhere that you're at is going to be an important spot. Okay. I'm, nervous. I'm more worried about the introductions. And also, will the voice hold out? These are the authentic ones, right. and we want you to be part Welcome of the Cowboy. The cowboy. Oh, okay. No turning back now. Genesis, opening night. Basically, I run the show. But I think they know who's boss. By the way, Phil won't see any of this, will he? I think it was easier, the rehearsals this time, because we started off in Chillingfold, which is a little village where our studio is. I think Tony and I, Banks and I, had done more work than normal, because there'd been, I guess, a longer gap, and a lot of 
of songs to learn. And the first day we did the whole set. It took all day, but I didn't finish it. We had a sort of extended set list at that point of songs we were going to try, uh, which we talked about. And we, you know, even before we got to that first thing, was one or two we decided not to do. And we decided, you know, but then we came into the studio, we, um, we still probably had about four hours of material that we were actually started rehearsing. By the time you've got the obvious songs that you definitely are going to play because um, A, you want to play them and be their audience favourites and C, they're new, you've only got a few areas where you can say, OK, we've got 20 minutes here or half an hour. What, do you, well, what can we play? Well, we can play this, this and this. We've got to do an old medley, you know. So I think what we wanted to do was to definitely try some new, new old stuff. Genesis is that we're like a team, like a happy family. Oh, I do all the writing. I do all the writing. Yes, the good stuff. I write all the good stuff. No, 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 but no, but seriously, we're really tight, inseparable, you know? Can we talk about my solo career? Is that all right? I don't understand why maybe I sell more records than Genesis. Maybe um, it's accessibility is at a lower level, you know, you can actually get, you know, more people can get into it quicker. Oh, think twice, cause it's another day for you and me in paradise. I've never really wanted to, to test, to see whether I could do a stadium tour or not. And the Genesis music transmits, translates to a, a larger crowd because of the size of the music. And it's, and it's more visual. But I just generally feel, especially in America where the audience level is like a lot louder and my stuff is a lot quieter, 
I don't think it would work. I can't imagine going up in Texas Stadium or Dodger Stadium and doing separate lives, you know, it just wouldn't work. I don't ever want to do a stadium tour. I mean, we know we played on my tour. We played two nights in Hanover, where we were playing with Genesis, 55,000 people. On both nights, we played two nights, and both nights sold out. And it was, it was actually the first big shows that I've ever done on my own, and it actually worked. I mean, people it were very, very quiet, and they all held matches in one more night. I mean, it, was, it was actually very moving because I'd never seen that many people in one place listening to my stuff. It's always been arenas, you know. my band you get me standing out front or sitting at a piano and it's the simple the simple side of it that appeals to me more uh, 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 he's auditioning for the singer and i don't really want to be the singer anymore i want to be just the drummer but he wants to be the singer well, i'm still surprised that people don't know i play the drums yeah they say hey i'm a bad drummer this is what i started off by doing yeah so they, they really think i'm just a singer Well, I'm sure Phil would like to play more drums. Although he plays quite a lot on this, um, on this tour, on this, this is the drum duet, which grows daily in length. I worked out a new drum duet, me and Chester, which is always a, a high point for me. We sit in a hotel room and we, we play on a chair. We sit, we take three <laughs> chairs, he sits on one, I sit on the other, and we play on the middle one. And we record it. This is what we're doing now. We, you know, we, we, we played for 20 minutes, recorded it, and picked the best bits out of it. And then we put it together and, and now we're starting to play it. sort of um, all for one, one for all sort of thing, you know. Did you ever hear my solo album? Sorry, no comment. Here, please take one. Did you ever hear Mike's solo album? <laughs> Last chance. After being together with the same people for 15, 16 years, you've got to have a bit of fresh air and outside life, otherwise it just gets too stifling. So it's not dissatisfaction is because you want to actually broaden your horizons and get some more musical experiences. People do find it very hard to understand what's going on with us because there's no one else quite like us I think who's I mean Phil's had the most amazing success you can't get much more than that the mechanics have done well Genesis is still doing well Tony's been doing uh, film scores and stuff so we're all very active. Did I mention my solo projects? Tony Sorrell was very good as well. Tony? That name rings a bell. Tony. Yeah, I think he plays, uh, sax. No. Cello. Um, I mean, it's what the reason I'm in this business in the first place is as a writer, and I would never... I never had any great urge to be a performer on stage and to kind of get everyone to look at me or anything like that. And as a musician, as a player, I never sort of felt this was something I did that much better than anybody else. It was always as a writer that I felt this is what I felt that I had something special at. By the Sea has always been one of my favourite songs. I mean, I, I mean, I Domino and Home by the Sea are the ones, key, key songs in the set for me in many ways.
The most difficult song, I think, for the, this show is the same as the last show, which is Domino. Just even the first half of the song, I'm probably doing about eight, eight or nine different sounds. And in the second half as well, you've really got to keep your head because it's, you know, things are just happening all the time and I've got to keep this thing vamping in the bass all the time while I'm doing all sorts of other things on my right hand. And it's those technically, it's not like the speed problems or anything like that. It is just quite difficult to make certain you keep your head and you do all the things in the right order, you know. If you do one tone change in the wrong order, then everything comes up wrong. You know? Domino is a great image to put on a screen. It just looks great, you know. Biggest dominoes you've ever seen. Out of the three of us, if you were to take any one of the three of us away and it still be it could still be Genesis, it would be me. You know, if you take me out of the situation, you have Tony and Mike. Genesis really wouldn't change that much. If you had to take one of the three of us away, I'm sure a lot of people would say, well, you get with a Tony because he doesn't do anything. You know, but in fact, him and Mike are far more the backbone of the, of the writing of the band. And I guess I'm the one that stands out front and, and communicates with an audience. place is Dallas because Mary Lights and Shoko Sound are here but we needed a building with a 52 foot height which is hard to find actually it's hard to think and the the Goodyear blimp hanger in Houston had it so we sat up there for two weeks and worked on music but an awful lot on lights and screens and all the footage we had when I walked in the hangar in Houston and saw exactly what it looked like I mean a drawing that's this big with just lines you know looks a little bit different from all the the strategic scaffolding that has to be placed, you know, for support. And it, there was a lot of hardware, and that's what struck me. And I thought, well, I just don't see how this can all come together in three weeks. I think for the word go, there's always been an interest in the visuals, because when the music and any kind of visual presentation we have locks in and works well, it's such a strong moment. I mean, I kind of felt that what we'd done with Very Lights, we'd reached a point when we couldn't, all we were going to do was more of the same. In a little way, the last tour, Invisible Touch tour, I felt was a bit like that. To me, this tour is definitely not a continuation of that. And this time round, we've kind of, using very light still, but we've added a new element with these Jumbotron screens, which are screens that work in daylight as well as darkness. We decided right from the word go that we weren't going to use it just as a video assist because I think that's been seen a lot of times. It's exciting and it's good to do, uh, but we wanted to try and integrate it more with the band. I mean, it's a, it is a problem with these things that you end up either looking at the screen or at the band. I think with a song like Dreaming While You Sleep, for example, when I'm in the front of the stage sitting on the chair like as if in, a doc in the hospital waiting room is basically what it's supposed to be. I think that kind of works because the screens are like what's going on in my mind.
Mike and I in particular have been concentrating very heavily on, on, the, on the visual side of it. And, you know, first run through, we, we did in the big place, we suddenly realised all the things that were wrong about it. Yes. Yeah. I, I've yeah. always seen this as just cross face. He says, well, that's you know, what I had. and then just sort of floats However, across. No, you Matthew know, I mean, felt I, it should be cut. Yeah, I don't think it should be cut. I, well, I, talked about, I talked to him this but before. Then. I don't think it should be cut. Well, what do we want to do? Either. Should we make an executive decision here? Yeah, I think it should be dissolved. All right. And we arrived over here the first day, and they had all these banks of computers and laser discs. And none of it worked, and they got the wrong system completely. As, as usual, wires get crossed. No one quite knew what we wanted to do. So it's that yeah, it's just one, thing. It's just one. But it's one button. One yeah. Button. Oh yeah, it's one button. Assuming the one button works, and assuming the person operating it can can press it in time, can press it at the right yeah. time, then we're okay. Yeah, that's all it yeah. takes. Right right so there is a nerve about that nervousness about whether all the stuff will work uh, at the right time. Everyone will sort of, you know, be doing. Right. We've got right, a lot of different yeah. operators. They've all got to punch buttons at the right moment or put their faders up. And if it doesn't happen, you tend to get a bit sensitive to it, particularly the ones you can see. You know, um, some songs where you can actually watch the screens a bit and you know if it's going wrong. Riding the last spike, lifting and laying the track. With blistering hands, the sun burning your back. Genesis on record, I think some of you, if not most of you, will know that Genesis on record nowadays is just the three of us, me, Mike and Tony, but since 1977 and 78, we've had two great friends and great musicians playing with us on stage. They're truly part of Genesis Live. So would you welcome, please, on the guitar from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Mr. Daryl Sturmer, ladies and gentlemen. And on the drums, to the backbone of this band, I think. Would you welcome, please, from Los Angeles, Mr. Chester Thompson. I feel very sorry for Chester. With this band, you don't just... The song isn't written and you don't just play along to it. The drums are kind of integral to the composition of the song, where they come in, the style in which you play. When it comes to taking that on stage with Chester, the poor guy, you know, it, it, I mean, he's a brilliant drummer. He has to tr suddenly become me. I think the wall was real fast last night. Well, not real fast. It sounded okay, but what happens is that the acceleration as well at the end of the song. Mm -hmm. The music's challenging because there's more variety in the music. You know, uh, you know the three of them. I mean, Phil's music is good, but there's just a huge, there's just a lot more variety in the stuff. Uh, you know, working, working with the group. Then what did he say? <laughs> and I mean, this has been going on for longer. I mean, I've been doing the tours with the group for 16 years now. You know, and. That feels like the actual, that's what, that's the band, you know, that feels like the band. With, with Phil's thing, there's been some changes over the years, not a lot, but Two. it doesn't, it doesn't Two. feel as, as cozy and intimate Two. as it is, you know? No, I'm not nervous about the gig, but I'm nervous about this, this interview right now. Well, mainly I use the pedals when I'm playing bass for some reason, but, um... I use it in this song. Um, turn it on again. Delay going because uh, it needs two guitars, so it, you have to have some kind of bass. So, what I'll do the guitar is like. Uh
I play guitar on mostly the older Genesis stuff. The stuff that Steve Hackett would play guitar. And on the newer stuff, I play bass guitar. He can play very fast, and I play very slow. <laughs> it's about how I, describe, how I describe it. I mean, he's technically unbelievably capable. Um, and I'm not. I've got something else, I suppose. Uh, well, I hope I have. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm in big trouble. Sometimes the song, like the I Can't Dance one and the Jesus video, are great vehicles because you've got lyrics that take you down a humorous avenue. You really have a chance to have a bit of fun with them. Funny ones, best of all, which is the ones I like the best. I, I don't know if you if you can capture the right mood on a more serious one, it works. I thought No Son of Mine, we captured the mood nicely. That was great. It's a difficult, difficult thing for us. I mean, you know, particularly Mike and I, we're not actors. I don't think anyhow. <laughs> No, we aren't, definitely. Whereas Phil, we are lucky in having Phil, who is good in front of a camera, so we can, we can be just good enough, I think, to back him up. They always say, well, we're better off when we pretend to be somebody else. I actually think that a video like Invisible Touch, when they were basic, we were all just ourselves for the day. And it was filmed and put, you know, spliced together the, the fun bits of the day and the end. But I think, I think that works too. The subject that all fascinates us is the idea of television evangelists. It's an extraordinary piece of TV, really, you know. I mean, the first time I ever saw it, saw it I, I thought it was a comedy. I'm absolutely serious about that. I thought it was comedy. And it, it wasn't until I watched it for about five, ten minutes, I suddenly realized this wasn't a sketch. This would be going on for too long. So the song was written and the lyrics were, were done, and it seemed a natural video to uh, have a bit of fun with. It was a great storyline. I mean, all we're doing, really, is just saying that, that these guys that that come on your television screens every Sunday, probably 55 to 60% of them aren't the genuine article. And they've got, they, they found this way of actually getting money, siphoning some of it off without people asking too many questions. It was on a divine visitation that the Lord told me that I was to go on the television. I was lying on the bed and the bed began to go around and I had the sensation like I was on a merry-go-round. And then the furniture joined in and then I was in the stars. There were stars everywhere, above me, below me, to the left of me, to the right of me. Millions and millions of stars and the Lord said, the stars are the souls that you will win for me. The Lord actually talks to me, you know. I hear what Spiegel said and he said to me, get me 18 million dollars by the weekend. And the angel of the Lord stands by my side and speaks into my ear. It's a beautiful thing. And I hear what's being said. It's a marvelous, marvelous experience. I never thought such a thing could happen in the name of Jesus.
Joe spoke to me. He said, Stretch spoke to you. Tell the people to put their hands against yours, and I want you. Get me $18 million by the weekend. Touch the screen. Touch the screen. Did you see the face on the TV screen? Come at you every Sunday. See the face on the billboard. Well, that man is me. On the color of the magazine. There's no question why I'm smiling. Everywhere. He just uses me as his instrument. He speaks and his power goes through my voice. The sign of the cross. Jesus taught me that. Why find me practicing what I'm preaching? Why find me making no sacrifice? standing before the cameras right here in the cathedral and the Lord spoke to me he said stretch forth your hand and tell the people to put their hands against yours and I will heal them he said this is a form of laying on of hands so put your hands on the screens now touch the screen touch the screen heal 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 in the name of Jesus please heal touch the screen You're sitting at home watching this special and you got one of these on, boy, you're in trouble. <laughs> back, please. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, stretch forth your hand, put the... Sorry. All right, here we go, stand by. All right, we're gonna shoot this. Ball up, do I'm out of Benny Hill. How's it, man? Still gotta plot a little bit. Okay, up. Knees out of foot. Take your last bet.
basket and you'll dump it on top of there and you just keep working the crowd, okay? You're collecting money. You actually look shorter than me. I do. <laughs> it's kind of right. <laughs> but come out smiling, Ryan. We're doing it again for me, boys. Sorry. <laughs> I can't work with him anymore. I don't mind going nude. I can say I went nude to film. In the name of James. Putting on wigs and dresses is a normal, everyday thing in the Rutherford household. So this video with no change to that. The first day, you know, you, you, th you think you look normal, and then you look in the mirror and you sort of you have a fright. But the third day, Tony looked quite normal to me. I mean, I virtually saw no difference when he took the wig off. You thought it was real, yeah? Good for you. New deal. Beautiful. Beautiful. Don't you just love it when it happens? I can't dance thing. Where did it happen? Come from? I don't really dance. I dance very quick for about two minutes. Very no, quick no, no, for I, two I, minutes. I peak very quickly. And, and you're... Dancing. Dancing. Oh, <laughs> just dancing. The thing that makes it difficult is the just sheer size of it, because it's an open-air show only, and we've got the PA much further apart. The basic structure is, is so big. And the video screens, obviously, are the, your, the forefronts of sort of the technology here. But you know, had to have a computer program, sort of, which was kind of written specially to, to operate them. Anything that's completely new, you know, it's like when we first used the very lights. There, there were a lot of problems with them. But it was still very effective, even though they didn't work every night. This is the world we live in. This little thing here means that every gig sounds the same. You can play a club, you can play a 15,000 CD, you can play a 60,000 CD. Every night, it will sound the same. These guys have to put up with all the acoustics, not me. See, I'm smart. I'm going to have a good tour. This, this one here, this one here, this one still has more volume and more top. Until they break. The last few days has really come together I and mean, we moved to Texas Stadium where we saw that our original lighting cues were a little bit too soft because it's a much bigger place than the, the hangar in Houston. And it just started to take shape uh, the last couple of days, really. So we're going down now, we're going down for the first rehearsal. Six weeks to prepare for a tour, you'll take six weeks. If you've got three weeks, you do it in three weeks. The first show is always the worst because so many things that you, are unknowns at that point, you don't even know, you haven't got the sort of quite the confidence in the set at that point. The equipment can let you down, that sort of thing, and you don't quite know what it's going to be like when you actually do the whole show as one. Well, the key to my survival was never in much doubt. The question was how
Okay, I'm Nancy J with Mike Rutherford and Tony Banks of Genesis. Genesis. And we're going to be live on Newswatch 11 in just a moment. The entertainment watch, don't go away. It gets harder each time out because just to play the shows and do nothing else and travel wouldn't be hard at all. It's the fact that in between you've got videos to make, interviews, and we're trying to cut down a bit on that, but there's still quite a lot of extra things to do that makes, that makes, that makes the day difficult. Good evening, North America. J.J. Jackson for the Global Satellite Network. I'm in uh, Texas Stadium and actually in the locker room. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys play, and we're, we're about tonight. We're in with three very rather famous Englishmen. We have uh, the members of Genesis, the core of the band, of course. Well, there is a lot of interviews to do and stuff. I mean, obviously, you're trying to sort of do interviews, you know, to try and make certain as many people come to the show as possible. We've been rehearsing in a very large blimp hangout in Houston. Um, and, of course, you know, the last couple of days we've been at the Texas Stadium, so that gives us an idea of what it's going to be like and how small you can look, even smaller than I really am, <laughs> in fact. But what really fascinates me is why is you've got the, the volume and the EQ on your voice. Yeah, we're not I, very happy. I'm, sitting I, here, I'm sitting here wondering that and myself. And I sound like a Mr. Wimp. In fact, even <laughs> all three of us sound like real Mr. Wimps, whereas JJ's here going, whoa, 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 whoa. Hello, it's a beautiful thing, baby. Right. We've always made a point of bringing people, I mean, uh, wives and people, people on the even, road. even if the wives couldn't come here. <laughs> 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 yeah, sorry, okay. You did let it open, okay? <laughs> oh, good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Mount Kilimanjaro is nine. And tonight we fly to London. Of course, we'll fly on Virgin. And I like, I really like the in-flight entertainment. You know, it's really sophisticated. I always have to explain the cartoons to Phil. It's embarrassing. I mean, what what kind of airline would call itself Virgin anyway? I'm David Brinkley. Is this how we elect our future presidents, answering questions on television instead of traveling around shaking hands and kissing babies?
America's Watch.